What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Ogre Battle 64. And once again, somehow I managed to just completely lose the audio commentary thingy for this episode. So I'm gonna be uh, recording this in post once again. So since last time, Magnus has turned 45, so he's getting up there in age. And I have uh, done some stuff with my army. You may notice that uh, some guys are kind of missing from their unit. And Magnus's unit is looking a little bit different than normal. So what I've done is uh, everyone who is kind of like their level isn't like the, uh, even with the rest of their unit, so if someone is particularly behind the rest of their unit, I've removed them. I've also made Magnus's unit pretty much as good as I can get it. Uh, I've given them all the best equipment, and I kind of made sure that Orwell is in there because he's water elemental, and Fiatch is fire elemental, which will come in handy too. Not that either of those make a particularly big difference, but it might come in handy. I also gave uh, Fidatch the sword, sword, the shield of Inferno, and that's something that I kind of want him to use long term, because uh, as a fire elemental character, typically he tends to take extra damage from water attacks. And if we look at the Shield of Inferno, it gives him some extra resistance to water. It reduces his resistance to fire, but uh, it just kind of evens out the elemental damage that he takes all around. So, uh, since last time, I've also done a little bit of training. I, I can't quite recall who I actually did the training with, but it doesn't quite matter. Uh, and I've done it all in Mylesia. And that's important because now, if I go back and go to do some training with Magnus, if the video will ever get to that part, okay, training. No, what? What are you doing? Go to training. Okay, training and Magnus. So if you train in. There's cer certain areas in the the world where if you train there several times in a row and then uh, train there with Magnus, you'll encounter a special opponent. And Mylesia is one such place, and this is one such unit. So in the front there, we've got a dragoon, which is a very advanced uh, class that we won't be seeing anything out of for a very long time. And he's not the most dangerous target, but I want to set my unit to attack the leader just so I can take him. I, I would prefer to take out the dragon in the back there first, but just the way the AI works, there's no real way to kind of set it so that I consistently attack that dragon. So I figure it's better to take out the Dragoon first, even though he's not the most dangerous target, just to take him out and then I can focus on the Dragon full time. So the Dragon is a Flare Brass, and that is a Master Class Dragon. It's the most evolved form, and as you probably have noticed, uh, in the back row, Flare Brasses, and much like other, all elemental, all different types of Dragons, they get in a big area attack in the back, which um, hits the entire enemy unit. I believe they use it twice per engagement. And it's pretty strong. And all of them also come with uh, some additional uh, uh, status effect. The Flare Brass's Crimson Note attack... The Flare Brass's Crimson Note attack uh, reduces the power of people at random. So basically the entire unit at this point is at half capacity, but we managed to pull it off. And for finishing that 
encounter successfully, we get the Pedra of Flame. And that is one of the biggest ways that you get additional Pedras. Uh, there are, I believe, two other locations on the map where we can do that. Uh, we don't have access to any of those yet. Uh, we could have done this at Mylesia earlier, we just didn't. So, now what I'm going to do is, uh, all of the kind of units, that, characters that were behind in their unit, as I mentioned, I, I removed them from their unit, I kind of gave them their own unit. So, uh, well, let's, let's fix this up now. But anyways, uh, I, I gave them their own unit off to the side, and once I'm done fixing this up, I am going to uh, do a bunch of training with them. And uh, the idea there is to kind of catch them up to par with everyone else without having the rest of their unit get kind of ahead of the curve. My goal is to kind of get everyone to about level 12. Uh, I'm probably going to have a couple people who are a little bit ahead at like level 13, but... By kind of micromanaging who is in the, the unit that I'm training with uh, at any particular time, uh, I can kind of save some money and make sure no one gets too overleveled so that uh, like all the all the weaker people kind of train together, and I just rotate in people who are behind the curve. And uh, once someone reaches level twelve, I take them out and return them to their original unit. You may also notice that uh, in the bottom right there, I have this this unit, uh, which is just a bunch of random spare female characters that I had sitting around. And uh, I'm not going to be doing anything with this unit for a long time, but I figured I should just get it arranged now, uh, just just because, really. Uh, I, I am going to do something with it eventually, but not quite yet. So all my spare female characters are just going to go there for for now, and it's all good. So, uh, now, uh, th these are the guys that uh, I'm dealing with for the time being. Couple, a level 9, a couple level 10s. So, I'm going to do some training with them. And, I'm sure I've probably explained how training works before, but basically, uh, it's just uh, a full-on engagement. You, you fight until one, of the, one team or the other dies. Uh, it's not a battle like to the death, like you don't, your characters don't actually die. But you probably want to make sure that you give your unit the best equipment that you can. I'm kind of being a little bit lazy and not really doing that, but... Um, and the reason for that is because if one of your characters do quote-unquote die, they don't, they don't actually die, but they also won't get experience for that battle, so you want to try and keep everyone alive so that everyone can get experience. And just increasing your level will increase your chance of success because as your level goes up, the level of the people you're training against goes up too. So increasing your equipment is the best way to kind of increase your success rate in training. So now I'll kind of demonstrate what the uh, juggling around of the units looks like a little bit. So... Just looking at uh, other people that I can add to the unit at the moment. Yes, okay. Look, look around more. So, Taylor has uh, reached level 12, so change the Berserker to the unit, the unit leader real quick. Take him out. That's not what I want at all. I want to add character. And that way we can return him back to his original unit. 
And now we find ourselves a nice level 11 knight to take his place. Pop him into the training unit, so to speak. That's not where I want to put him. Let's put him in a proper position. There we go. So now I'm uh, I'm gonna continue training this unit and switching people in and out, and I will be back when everyone is at, at about level 12. All right. That took a little bit longer than I expected, but it wasn't too bad. So let's get the show on the road and head on over to the highlands of Sothon. The Steadfast, huh? Now if you weren't aware, the Steadfast is actually uh, Ankaseth's title or nickname or whatever you want to call it. Like in the the text box, I'm pretty sure that his name is usually referred to as Ankaseth the Steadfast. So, yeah. For what that's worth. I don't know if Ankaseth really has a whole lot to actually do with this mission, but I, I guess he's got to be somewhere. Gate of Radiant Cross, huh? Slavery is bad! We can't allow that. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you can wa wage, like, righteous wars and stuff. I mean, people's opinion of what's, what exactly is righteous is probably there is a little bit, but, you know, whatever. So, this is a f actually a very small map, but it's got a little bit of a trickiness to it. Yes, capturing the castle is what we have to do on every map. Flying units. I hate flying units. Done something to the bridge, huh? Oh, we're gonna have to keep an eye out for that. So, yeah, lots of kind of trickery going on on this map. That's not to say that it's particularly hard, but I mean... Knowing what they're up to does kind of tend to make these things a little bit easier. Yay for needlessly stating the victory and defeat conditions. If you haven't figured these out by now, then I don't know where you've been. This place is neutral, so we're probably going to want to protect that to make sure no bad guys take it over. So yeah, I mean, you can pretty much see the entire map on the, on a single screen, so it's definitely a very small map. But, uh, as always, that also kind of tends to mean that the enemies are just very dense get everyone on the map, and like I said, I'm not going to actually be using that last unit, so you don't have to worry about her. So let's get Magnus out front here. Don't want him to actually go on the stronghold because it's neutral. That is fairly neutral. Neutral alignment, not neutral control. This place is... oh, also neutral. That's very chaotic. And this place is... very lawful. Okay. So... let's send... Orwell out front. We're gonna need him to capture that stronghold down south, so I might as well get him out there. And feed hatch. I'm basically just going to... my main goal at the moment is just to kind of protect that neutral stronghold from the 
initial enemy engagement. Because at this point, they pretty much always have someone that they're sending at you straight away. Yeah, I can see a bunch of guys already. Fit. Thank thankfully. Thankfully, they're not. They don't go straight for the neutral stronghold. They don't really. They're not gonna like take it for no reason unless they. Uh, they need to use it to restore their health or something. So, looks like the near to me's are a little bit miffed with us. Oh, I uh. I kind of left the battle animations off. I'm sure I mentioned before, but uh, turning those off just speeds things up a lot, so I usually do that for training if I'm doing it off screen. Just to uh, expedite the process a little bit. But you know, when I'm actually watching the battles, then I think it makes sense to make everything look all pretty. Didn't quite kill the leader there. Hopefully, it's not gonna. Go for the stronghold. Oh, they, they healed him, didn't they? Well, that sucks. I hate healing items. I mean, I guess technically I should just use them more myself to kind of like even things up a little bit, but. Yeah, whatever. So hopefully this time around we can actually take out their leader. And hopefully Magnus gets his ass kicked a little bit less. Okay, well, leader is gone, so I, I would call that a success. Now I don't have to worry about him going for the uh, neutral stronghold. Do a little bit of a field pause so that we can kind of withdraw Magnus now that he has served his purpose. Okay, eat, go back to the base. You go after this guy. And we still got two more guys coming in, so I probably want someone to help deal with them now that Magnus is retreating. So let's bring Katrina in. And with that, I'm gonna leave it there for today on Let's Play Ogre Battle 64. Catch you later!